So folks, one of the things we've been waiting to see is if there's going to be a political hit for Donnie's legal troubles, both in the general election to come, because unfortunate as it is, it looks likely that he's going to be the nominee, but also within the Republican Party. And according to multiple voices within the GOP and beyond it, some polling experts and some rivals in the Republican Party, Donald Trump's legal troubles, you know, and a, a doubling down on this idea that he's going to weaponize his family to take all the money the GOP is fundraising and spend it only on protecting him and his legal bills and making him president and ignoring the fact that while, yes, the presidency is important, there's 100 seats in the Senate and there's 435 seats in the House and you got to win enough of those as well. All of this is actually harming him. And there was a major collapse of Donald Trump fainting in public, Donald Trump down, polling numbers plummeting. And this is all because it's starting to catch up to, to him. There was a sense that out of loyalty to Trump and the fact that he could win, that people were sticking by him. And that's changed all of a sudden since the verdict. I want you to watch all of this. And again, the secret of YouTube, watch it all the way through, because when you do, YouTube will show this to MAGA conservatives and it'll ruin their day. Although hopefully maybe we'll change some minds as well. They need to see that their own party, even more than before, is flipping on Donald. Add up to more than $400 million is quite a feat. Fred? All right, Kirsten, thank you so much. With me now to talk more about the political fallout and impact of this verdict is Frank Lutz. Uh, he's a pollster and communication strategist. Frank, great to see you. So Trump now owes about $500 million in legal judgments if he does decide to rely on PAC money and donations to help pay some of those bills. How might that impact his political campaign? I think this is significant. So let's start with the context that Donald Trump has survived everything. He survived felony accounts, 91 of them. He survived court cases. He survived being found guilty already on two different trials, and there are several more to go. And he's been even kicked off the ballot, and yet he continues to do better and better as time goes on. Because in the end, it's not in a vacuum. It's Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. That said, I believe donors will be annoyed, angry, for the fact that their money isn't going to his presidential campaign, but it's going to his legal fund. Now, make no mistake. Trump's supporters are willing to follow him to the ends of the earth. He has greater intensity of support than any candidate I've ever seen in my professional career. But the idea that this is going to lawyers to pay off guilty verdicts, that may be the beginning. And I'm so careful about saying it. But in the end, I do know that some voters will resent that, will oppose that. And quite frankly, if that's what happens... Trump is going to have a lot of explaining to do. OK, and you did say some. But remember, some of these court appearances he's using as a way to get people to donate. So perhaps there are perhaps it's a significant number of his supporters who were saying that's OK, because you know what? Uh, uh, you know, we, we want you to win. And so we have been making donations in step with the fact that you have so many legal cases. Not only is that a good point, that's a great point. And that's something that I don't think some Trump opponents understand, that people really are willing to go to the ends of the earth. They really are willing to give their own finances to keep Donald Trump moving forward. And we have not seen this in American politics. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. here in the middle of February, we are truly in uncharted political territory. That is so true. Frank Luntz, always good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. There is. Why do you think Trump hasn't said anything uh, about Navalny yet? Nothing. It's it's actually pretty amazing that he not only after making those comments that he would encourage Putin to invade NATO, but the fact that he won't acknowledge anything with Navalny. Either he sides with Putin and thinks it's cool that that Putin killed one of his political opponents 
or he just doesn't think it's that big of a deal. Either one of those is concerning. Either one of those is a problem. We've got to start seriously having a conversation in America about our national security. We've got to start talking, having a conversation about the fact that there's a war in Europe, there's a war in the Middle East, North Korea's testing intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of hitting the U.S., China's on the march, you've got Iran who's literally trying to kill our American soldiers and you've got Russians who are doing blinding satellites in space. There's a lot going on. This is not the time to talk about America hiding in a bubble and not doing anything with the rest of the world. This is the time we should be strengthening our alliances and making sure we're putting up a strong front so that we can prevent further wars from happening. Trump is engineering a takeover of the Republican National Committee and he wants to make his daughter-in-law uh, the co-chair. I want to play something that Laura Trump had to say about the role of the RNC. Every single penny will go to the number one and the only job of the RNC. That is electing Donald J. Trump as president of the United States. So is that the, the, the one and only job of the RNC? Electing Donald Trump president of the United States? Is that, is that where every penny should go? I, I assume you don't agree with that. I mean, it should be a wake-up call for Republicans all over this country. I mean, you look at the fact that we saw in his campaign reports that he used $50 million of campaign contributions to pay for his personal court cases. Then he tried to get the RNC to name him the presumptive nominee. We don't anoint kings in America. So when he got pushed back on that, they started to walk it back. Now he's trying to control the RNC by putting his daughter-in-law as the co-chair and putting his campaign manager as the director of operations. Now, when you look at that, the part I worry about is the RNC is now going to be the piggy bank for Trump's legal fees. The RNC is almost broke already. Now you go and see he's looking for other avenues to pay his legal fees. The RNC, you can hang up winning the House and the Senate or having any resources for us to win any other um, races if all they're doing is thinking about how they're going to pay his court fees. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the fact. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. But we have got to right the ship in this country. Seventy percent of Americans have said they don't want Donald Trump or Joe Biden to be their only choices. Fifty-nine percent of Americans have said Donald Trump is too old and Joe Biden's too old to run for president. We need a new generational leader that's not distracted by court cases, that's not filled with vengeance towards our enemies, that's not in the drama. So what would you be doing if you were president right now? How would you make Putin pay for this? I think it's important to stand with the Russian people who believe Navalny was really talking for them. I mean, you look at this hero, he was fighting corruption, he was fighting um, what Putin does, and what did Putin do? He killed him, um, just like he does all his political opponents, and I think that's very telling. But this goes back to the fact that we need to remind the American people that Vladimir Putin is not our friend. Vladimir Putin is not cool. This is not someone we want to associate with. This is not someone that we want to be friends with. This is not someone that we can trust. And so when you hear Donald Trump say in South Carolina a week ago that he would encourage Putin to invade our allies if they weren't pulling their weight, that's bone chilling. Because all he did in that one moment was empower Putin. And all he did in that moment was he sided with a guy that kills his political opponents. He sided with a thug that arrests American journalists and holds them hostage. And he sided with a guy who wanted to make a point to the Russian people, don't challenge me in the next election or this will happen to you too. We have to start waking up to what this means. And that's why the importance of making sure that Ukraine wins is clear because we have to prevent further war. And right now, Putin is feeling more emboldened than he ever has. Because people are concerned about election integrity. Tell me specifics in addition to that ballot harvesting, things that you think are needed and that you will do to ensure, to ensure a free and fair election come November. Well, first of all, I think we need to raise a lot of money. We know the Democrats uh, ha have a mountain of it right now, and we need to do the same. So I think you need to reestablish that people can feel good about donating to the RNC, which right now 
you know, some people aren't really sure how is their money being spent. What I can assure you is if I am there, I will make sure that every single penny donated to the RNC goes to electing Donald Trump and again, extending our lead in the House and taking back the Senate. I think, we, look, we, we need poll watchers in places all across this country. If you want to volunteer right now, you can go to DonaldJTrump.com and sign up to be a volunteer. Uh, the, the truth is we really need to have people in place, legal people in place on Election Day so that that if there are any challenges, anything questionable at all, we are ready to strike at a moment's notice. And, and we really have to hit this thing head on. We have a lot of work to do. There's a little time to go between now and November 5th. And uh, look, we're going to hit the ground running as soon as uh, it, and if I am elected as co-chair of the RNC. And, and having all of his legal problems, that's a, lot. But that's a lot. Number one. Number two, uh, you know, past is is prologue. And you already saw how they handled as these cases and other issues were emerging during his four years, how the RNC was used financially, uh, where resources were going and 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 how it impacted, quite honestly, which is why they weren't winning elections in some critical uh, states, because they didn't have the resources to put on the ground. Um, because those resources were la largely diverted. So here we are now. So here's the play. If I want to take something over, what do I do? I clear out the leadership. Yeah. So I take out the national chairwoman and I put in, um, you know, a, a, a sycophant, a, a loyalist who primarily uh, and fundamentally agrees that the election, the last election was stolen. Yep. Put a pin in that. It's important because if he gets reelected, right? What that means is you now have in place some of the groundwork you're going to need to make the claims to relitigate the mm -hmm. 2020 election. But we can talk about that another time. The second thing is you then put people who you are close with, family members, and close allies and associates like La Saviata and Savita, and, and put them in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. That's where the money comes in. That's where the ground game uh, really comes and is materialized for him. The dollars come in. They go out the door in other forms and fashions to pay for those bills as they come due. And that, as, as Politico and other sources are noting, is a real problem going forward. You know, the, the comparison I was making, there's a great Sopranos episode called The Bust Out. In it, a guy who runs a sports mm -hmm. go, sporting goods store gets into debt to Tony Soprano's gang from a poker game. And when he's in too deep, they take over his sporting goods store. And they basically strip it bare. Yeah. They take all the stuff. They start billing uh, uh, flight tickets on the accounts, <laughs> right? Let it go to collections. And the guy, I mean, they basically just, it, it's a husk, right? right? It's like, here's value. And I just keep thinking of the bust out. Yeah. And I'm thinking this is like, this is the RNC man, and they're going to have their hands over it. And he needs lots of money to keep this legal situation well, going. And you've already seen some of the impacts coming into this, Chris, because what did the RNC report at the end of 2023? Eight million dollars in the bank, cash on hand, going into a presidential cycle. One of the two major national parties in America. Eight million, eight million dollars. Now, th the reality of that is that number is fine if you've just come off of an election cycle where you've had to right. spend Spending a lot of money, right? right? But you aren't. It's 2023. 2023. And not only that number is an eight million dollar number you have in January coming off of the 22 cycle, not in December. Right a year after that cycle is over. So it, you're already seeing some problems internally with the ability to raise money. And now you're going to couple that, that whatever you do raise is already accounted for for Trump.